I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley and shadow of death, I will feel no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life. But I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The earth is the Lord's in all its fullness. The world and those who dwell therein. He has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy presence? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob. The generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, Shalom. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, family. O oh, you gates, lift up your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory, Shalom. Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemy and foe, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war may rise against me. In this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I see, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and to behold the beauty of the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. God is good even in this moment. Can you say amen? amen? He makes a way for us to connect to him. Amen. No matter where we are. No matter what we're going through, can you say amen? amen? Amen. This was our final viewing. Can you say amen? amen. All have viewed. Amen. Amen. Director. The children of God, I will tell you, those who are redeemed in the hand of God, this is not goodbye. It's I'll see you later. God is a consummate redeemer. He can do anything but fail. 
his redemption is complete. We don't always act like we're redeemed, but his redemption is complete. And when he redeems us, amen, no man can take us out of his hand. That is, God can bring us back to where he wants us to be. Amen. Because that's the kind of God we serve. It's never easy. But God promised to wipe the tears from all of our eyes. How awesome he is. Amen. And how grateful we are to have a hope in glory. A hope in Christ Jesus. It's not an easy season to say goodbye. But I like saying, for those who know the Lord, I'll see you later. God is an awesome God even now. He knows how to lift every burden, wipe every tear from your eye. He knows how to give you strength for today and tomorrow. And so we pray God's strength over you in this moment, not just for today, but for the morrow. Can you say amen? amen? Amen. We're here to remember the life and legacy of Robert Lee Johnson. Can you say amen? What a mighty God we serve. We're going to follow the program as printed. Can you say amen? We have a choir selection. And the scripture reading coming from Reverend Daniel Bell. And then Brother Johnson is going to come, Pastor Johnson is going to come and give us a prayer from the pulpit, a prayer of comfort. Can you say amen? amen. And then we'll have another selection, resolution, a short talk, uh, Chandra, amen, remarks, they'll be limited to two minutes, video presentation, another selection, and then I'll be up to share the word of God. Can you say amen? Amen. He's awesome, isn't he? Amen. Amen. Come on, family, to the family. Keep your head up and your hands higher. Whenever we lose a soldier in battle, you got to remember that you're still on the battlefield. Is anybody still on the battlefield this morning? Come on. God said that he would dry your eyes. And when we see him, there will be no more crying. That's why I said, well, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said I promise him that I, I said I will serve him till I die. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Come on, if you're on the battlefield, help me say I'm on the battlefield. Promise today, you promise to him that I'm gonna, I'm gonna promise to keep my hand to the plow, Lord, and him that I come on. I promise him that I, I'm gonna serve you, Lord. I promise to him that I, I'm gonna, I promise to him that I. Anybody made a promise today? Keep your hand to the gospel plow, and him that I. 
I said I would serve him until I die. We all know that the God that we serve is an awesome God. Can you say amen? He's awesome because he loves us unconditionally. Amen. And he never leave us for, or forsake us. So the Lord is good all the time. And all the time, the Lord is good. Can you say amen? Amen. I have the honor to do the Old Testament scripture in the New Testament scripture reading. Old Testament scripture reading comes from... Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my hand, my righteous right hand. Can you say amen? Amen. And the New Testament scripture reading comes from Romans 8, 35 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written? For your sake we were killed all day long. We were accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who love us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, or nor things to come, nor to the heights or death, or any other created things, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, who is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Can you say amen? amen. Hope this, these two scriptures will be a blessing to the hearers and doors of Christ's loving word. Can you say amen? Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We know our Father, you are God who too wise to ever make a mistake. We thank you, our Father, for this service to remind us one day we too must lay down and die. But our God, we were so grateful that, that we're saved and we have a place when this life is over down here. We can rest with thee in our eternal home. Now, Lord, we thank you for the comfort that you will give to these, this family. The only thing they have to do is look to the hills from which cometh their help. You're too wise, Lord, to, to let your children suffer because you said in your word, the death of your saint is precious in your sight. Now, Lord, we thank you and we, we claim victory that you will wrap your arms around this family. Let them know that this is not the end. Oh, he will spend eternity with you in one day. One day we will all meet death. It's appointed with our Father. It's appointed to us to men to die, but then the judgment. And we thank you that we won't have to face the judgment as unsaved folk. Yeah. We can say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I made it, I made it over. It might have been rough, but I made it. Bills might have been hard, but I made it. Robert has made his <laughs> journey. He walked with you. But he, he, he walked with you. He didn't walk like any. He walked all the way to heaven, but he died and you brought him there. And we thank you. Now, family, keep your hand in God's hand. Remember that God is your refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. 
In the name of our Savior, we humbly do pray. Amen. for him blessing you today give him the honor do him for the family of Mr. Robert Lee Johnson, All right. Bobby. Pastor Thurman H. West and the members of Southeast Community Church, 
offer our sincere condolences to Sister Diana Dennis, our pastor's executive assistant, Anissa Dennis, Laricia and Jessica Tuggle, and his family members who are here in the passing of Mr. Robert Lee Johnson. Yes, sir. This is a family full of love for one another, our pastor, and the members of Southeast Community Church. Continue showing the love of Christ Jesus and trust that at a time such as this, you can depend on him to heal your broken hearts. Yeah. We have all been called by the Lord our God to live for him through faith in Christ Jesus. Our faith in Christ Jesus inspires us to be ready when he calls our name. And moreover, to be a light to the world and show the love of Christ to everyone you encounter. Because of this faith in Christ, this faith in Christ Jesus, as Lord and Savior, we will meet our family members who share the same faith on the other side. The reward for faithfulness is that we will hear that welcome voice sing, Servant, well done. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Romans chapter 14, verses 7 through 9, record these words. For some, for none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For this, for to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Whereas Mr. Robert Lee Johnson answered the call of the Lord our God and has transitioned from his body on earth into the very presence of the Lord. Therefore, be it resolved that we, the members of Southeast Community Church and Pastor Thurman H. West, do also commend the members of his family and to everyone whose life he touched to Christ Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. And four more, at the four more mentioned faith, for without faith, it is impossible to please God. We are praying that your faith not fail and that you will find comfort in these words. Resolve lastly that a copy of this resolution will be given to the family and recorded in the historical files of Southeast Community Church. Humbly submitted Saturday, December 19, 2020, Southeast Community Church, Pastor Thurman H. West, Senior Pastor. Amen. Thank you for your attention. Amen. Sister Chandra, come on. Share. Amen. First, giving praises to God, honor to Pastor West, to all the ministers that are present, and to my family. It's good to see y'all. Uh, even in this pandemic, it's good to see y'all. Um, so when I was thinking about a, a short talk and, um, and thinking about what is it that I could say about Uncle Robert. So I, I contemplated a, a few things, but um, the thought that resonated, resonated with me the most was who was Uncle Robert to me? To me, he was my Uncle Robert. He was that uncle that once lived in Detroit, the Motor City. 
and he talks about how he lived in the Motor City because you know the Motor City was the place where um, where most of the vehicles that were made in America where they were made. Um, he was the uncle that talked about the Motown City um, because it was home of Motown Records and the many artists that he loved to listen to. Artists like Aretha Franklin, The Temptations, Smokey Robinson, Marvin Gaye, The Supremes, Stevie Wonder, Diana Ross, The Jackson Five, The Four Tops, Reverend Al Green, The Miracles, just to name a few. Okay, he also liked to tell us stories about attending church under the leadership of Pastor C.L. Franklin and listening to Aretha Franklin sing at her father's church. He was that uncle that could, you could sit down and enjoy all of that music with. He was also a brother to my mother and her siblings, the uncle to my cousins, the cousin to my cousins, and the godfather to my children, Donna and DJ, AKA Fifi, also known as Sly, and DJ Bojo. He was my straight shooter when I needed the truth. I can't say that he was a straight shooter when he went deer hunting, because I don't know how many deer he was able to kill when he was out there, because I wasn't there. But although that straight shot came in the form of a joke sometimes, it was a straight shot with no chaser. I know there were, are many stories I could tell you, but I don't have all day and I can't tell it all, so I won't. What I will say is that my Uncle Robert would not want you to be, sit here, to be sitting here sad because if you know like I know, he is sitting somewhere looking down on us, waiting for the joke that he would tell after this homegoing service. So um, just a forewarning, I will be acting in his honor today. Um, so be encouraged, knowing that this pain that you are feeling today will ease as the days pass. Know that God's grace is sufficient. Also know that while you think that you can't move on from the hurt and the pain, he did. Look at him now. And you can too. With God, you can do all things. Know that the word of God declares in Psalms 147 and 3 that he promised that he could heal our broken hearts and bind up our wounds, right? Just know that you can trust God to do what his word said. Uncle Robert's favorite scripture also says in St. John 14 and one, let not your heart be troubled, ye believe in God, believe also in me. So trust God. But before I take my seat, it would, I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge some of the crazy nicknames that, that Uncle Robert bestowed upon many of us. Uh, and it's, it's just funny because he always gave us nicknames and he would never call us by our real names. And, um, and the funny thing about it is that we all answered to those crazy nicknames. Like Lil Wine, that would be Monica. Sally, that's Lance. Scooter, that's Kamaya. Cameroni, that's Cameron. Noonie, that's Chantel over there. Head, Reginald, because he had a big head. Uh, Kashira, because he couldn't say Tashira. Uh, Bojo, that's my DJ. Fifi, that's Donna. And he, he, he would always call her Sly when she thought she was pulling a fast one on him. So uh, she's Fifi, AKA Sly. Legs, that's me, because he always thought I would break my legs on the heels that I wore. Doc, that's my brother Lawrence. Shelly, that's Michelle. Toneg, that's my husband, Don. Don't know what that means, where that came from, but, um, but that's what he called him and he answered to it. Uh, to my cousin, uh, Betty Ann, she's our praying cousin. He called her Rev. <laughs> uh, Jessica, my niece, he called her Ali because Jessica could pick a fight with anybody. My uncle Richard, he is also known as Fox because he slides a fox and he has red hair. My mom was just sis. Chase, he's all, he's Lil Prince. Trey, he's Snoop. <laughs> Reese, that's Reese Oli. And then my cousin Brenda Faye, he always, she reminded him of our great Aunt Ethel who lived in Detroit, so he called her Aunt Ethel. And then there's our cousin Mary Jo, who's also a, a minister. So he called her Missionary Joe. 
just those are some of the fun names that he also that he called all of us and we will hold those names dear in our heart i might not know all of them but i know that every one of us can has a story that they could tell about how those names were derived it's funny because uncle robert uh, came to visit me and stayed a month with me back in august and we talked about a little of everything and talked about food. He and my husband, Don, could sit out on our patio and talk about food all the time. And my husband and Don, they would talk about food and Uncle Robert would, you know, he had a name for the foods. You know, he would say, I said, Uncle Robert, I got some spaghetti in there. Oh, you got some strings in there? I love those strings. Chitlins, he called those things guts. And then black eyed peas, he called those one eyed Lucy's. Uh, and the pig ears, he called those flappers. And then my, my favorite one was pig feet, and he called those trotters. So if you don't remember anything about Uncle Robert, just remember that those are the funniest, some of the funniest stories came out of those nicknames that he gave. Cherish those thoughts, love on those thoughts, because those things will help us to remember him and help with our healing process. To all of my family and our friends, I say that we love you and trust God through this. The church say amen. amen. Wasn't that wonderful? Can you say amen? amen? To underscore the life and legacy of the man who lived among you and the joy he brought. Come on, say amen. amen. God is good all the time. Y'all had a good time with Uncle Robert. Yeah. Can you say amen? amen? God does heal broken hearts and he binds up open wounds. Amen. So the Lord will heal your heart in this moment. We're going to have remarks. The family has asked for two minutes, please. Can you say amen? amen. Those who want to have remarks, amen. Amen. Come to the podium to my left. Can you say amen? amen. And share amen. Uh, your story about Uncle Robert. Good morning, church. Good morning. My name is Ardenia Yvette Jones, a.k.a. Crazy, a.k.a. Little Jack. Mm -hmm. Robert Lee was my cousin. We, the stories I could tell you about that boy, Lord. He's a gentle heart. He used to tell me, you're just like your mama. You put your foot to the pedal, and you get to lose that in five minutes. And I tell him, I'll beat him on the bicycle. And he would tell me, yeah, you're just like your mama. When you get on the WT road, you just tap everything. I said, I got it honestly. He used to tell me, I don't want to ride with you, vet. Mm-mm. No, he said, I see my life flash in front of me like it's like. I said, just like you're on the bike. I'm going to miss it. But I know his journey is finished. He has fought a good fight, but the Lord has something better for him. Now, I could picture him <laughs> going to heaven on that bicycle, and the Lord going to say, no, 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 Robert. And Robert going to have something smart to say. And the Lord said, well, you're just going to have to wait until I get off my vacation so you can come up to heaven. Robert would talk him, the Lord down. That's what my cousin do. And the Lord gonna say, okay, Robert, we gonna let you in. And Robert gonna say, well, you should have done that in the beginning when I came up with the first time. He always has something smart to say. And the last time I talked to him, he told me, he said, you so crazy. I said, okay, I'm crazy. I said, but then I thought about it, I said, oh yeah, I am the oldest. Everybody was older than he was. I don't care what age you were. Everybody was older than Robert Lee Johnson. He used to tell me, oh, you stand in line for your social security check? I said, yeah, Robert. I said, you in front of me. He was like, oh, 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 I got mine already. I said, okay. But I know he's in a better place and I know He's talking trash on that bicycle in heaven. He's going to hit the clouds and he's going to bounce with no pain. And he's going to see everyone that left here before him. 
Because one by one, we're going to take that, we're gonna have to take that walk. But I'd rather take mine on a walk than a bicycle. <laughs> so, cuz, wait for me. Because one by one, we coming. And when we get that leak together again, the Lord's going to have to throw all of us out. Because we're going to have to party like it was nothing else. And the Lord's going to say, y'all going to have to keep the noise down. And Robert's going to say, well, we're just going to have to move to another cloud then. So, rest in peace, Diane, the rest of the family. Your hearts might be heavy, tears might be flowing. But that's what Robert don't want y'all to cry. He wants y'all to have a good time. He's always laughter, the fond memories, and that's what I'm going to remember. The crazy stories, the riding of the bicycle, and Paulie, nobody else. Nobody else. Rest in peace. Love you, Robert. Good afternoon, everybody. I didn't plan on speaking today, but I know that if I don't, I'm going to leave here with some regret. So I got up today. Um, last time I talked to Uncle Robert was on FaceTime about a month ago. Uncle Robert always teasing me about stuff. The last time we were on FaceTime, he said, Noonie. I said, at what, Uncle Robert? He was like, when you going to come and see me? I told him soon, I didn't do that. While we were on the phone, Uncle Robert said, Noonie, you had a baby? I was like, Uncle Robert, you know I ain't had no baby. Wishing that up on me. I said, wow, you gonna be my babysitter? <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Robert called me Noonie. A lot of y'all may know. Uncle Robert has never, ever called me by my first name, my 30 years walking this earth. About six months ago, maybe more, I decided to change my Facebook name to Noonie because I felt like that, that's who I was. So today, it's, it's a heavy heart. I don't want to tell them goodbye, so it's always see you later. I know he's up there with Aunt Moosey, my brother Torn, who I miss dearly. <laughs> To my brothers, to my uncles, sisters, and brothers, I feel y'all hurt. I feel y'all pain. And I'm sorry y'all going through this. But just know he's up there with Mama Tut. He's up there with Torn. And that gives me great peace. I will definitely miss Uncle Robert, his jokes. Um... So y'all know my dad passed in 95. Uncle Robert has always been there for me, my mom, my brothers, my sister. He has always been there for my nieces and my nephews. I used to tell people that I knew that was coming to the house that, oh yeah, that's my dad, knowing that he was my uncle. Robert treated me as if I was his daughter. Took me everywhere from the corner stores. I would always hit him up for money. Uncle Robert, you got $5? You got $10? Said, Noonie, what you need that for? It's all going at the corner store. But he never hesitated. He always gave to me. Anytime I have any issues, any worries, I remember when I was going through a depression with Torn. He pulled me out, we, we were he was staying with mom, and he said, Noonie, everything gonna be all right. He comforted me in a way that I really needed to be comforted. I'm gonna miss Uncle Robert dearly, just like everyone in this room, but I do wanna let y'all know that life goes on after today. We have to stay together. We have to continue to hold each other even, even after today, especially his sisters and brothers. They need all of us right now and even moving forward. I want to thank everybody for coming. 
I want to say I love you, Uncle Robert. I will miss you. And may you rest in peace. First, give it on to God, to pastor, to my pastor, and the pastor on the pulpit. I just want, um, I didn't have a nickname. I wasn't fortunate, but at his last day, his last days in hospice, I went to, I'm sorry, decorate his room for Christmas. And I knew that his time was winding, but I tried to keep a straight face. And I talked to him, my mom said, just talk to him. I talked to him like, I, I, I know you're gonna be here. I didn't make him seem like he was sick. He didn't talk like he was sick. So I was just talking to him and I told him, I said, hey, came in. He said, what you want, Mary Ann? I said, Ma, who is Mary Ann? So he was just like, yeah, you Mary Ann? I said, mama. He called me, I don't know them, I don't want to be calling no dead people names. So he started laughing. And he had this, hey, 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 you know, his little laugh. So I asked him, I said to him, I said, Uncle Rob, I said, how you doing? He said, oh, I'm all right. I said, won't you drink some of this juice? He said, mm-mm. I put it to his mouth, he started drinking. So that's when I started realizing that time was winding. But the day that me and my Aunt Jackie was there visiting with him, he slept all day, and she was just disappointed. I was disappointed too because we wanted more interaction. And so I was all on the people wall, climbing, putting up decorations and everything, all over his head, had my foot on this thing, and my ain't house, don't fall, don't fall. I said, he ain't gonna hear nothing, he ain't gonna feel nothing. But the beauty of it all was that my sister would call every day, and she said, did y'all get the mustard green recipe? Everybody wants the mustard green recipe. I said, well, if y'all ain't got it, I ain't going to get it now because it's, it's a done deal. It's a wrap. But what I want to say is that we have to just keep on keeping on because each and every one of us are hurting. I didn't think it was just going to be, I understand that, and I understand where I'm going when this is all over, said, and done. But if you don't know, it's time for you to get your life right today. Because if, if you want to see him on the other side, Uncle Robert helped people in the neighborhood. He, he had a garden in my mom's backyard. He fed them greens, okra, tomatoes. He built trees, of, uh, orange trees in the backyard. My mom was like, I got to try to keep that living. I got to try because he was so proud. But let me tell you what he did. He took an orange seed from an orange, and he planted it in, in the ground. Am I right, Mama? And he let it grow. What I'm trying to tell you, you put your faith in God just a little bit. And you watch it grow. And when it grow, you're going to feel brand new. And I'm not telling you something that I heard. It's something that I know for myself. Because it's not always easy to understand this. I'm my pastor's assistant. I go to a lot of funerals. I watch a lot of people on that front row weep like we weeping today. And I often wonder, do they know Christ? Do they know what the end is going to be? So I'm just saying to each and every one of you, including myself, we have to stay strong. And let's hold each other up because when the end comes, I want them to say, well done. Uncle Robert, well done. He lived his life. Well done. He helped people in the neighborhood. Well done. He did what he did for his family. Well done. All of us here, all his niece and nephew, we were his children. Well done. So I want to say to each and every one, I love y'all. Keep us in your prayer. Southeast, thank you so much for all you do for me and my family. Pastor West, thank you. Couldn't do it without you. That's all I have. First, giving honor to God, to the pastor of this great church, and to my family. I am the baby. My name is Teresa. Robert was my brother. He was the oldest. 
And as I sit back and I reminisce, I think about some things that we talked about. But most importantly, I thank God for him. I thank God for my family. But I didn't grow up with Robert. I didn't grow up. I, I don't know his childhood. But I thank God for one person, and that's Paul O'Connor. Paul grew up with me in Magnair. I didn't even know Paul was my cousin. But he went to search, and he found out that he had a cousin stayed down the street. And Paul told me, well, yeah, you got some siblings, you know. You got, you got a sister, Diane. You got a brother, Richard. You got a brother, Burke. You got Moosey. You got Jackie, you know. And I'm like, okay, all right. So I always thought in my mind as growing up that Paul was my brother. Couldn't tell me no different. My adopted parents used to say, no, that's your cousin. No, that's my brother. So when I met Robert at the time when Mama Nettie died, and he told me, he said, oh, yeah, he said, I'm your brother. I'm your big brother. Paul, not your brother. I'm your brother. He said, I'm the head and you the caboose. I said, okay, that'll work. But most importantly that I think about is that everything that we have been through as two children, we have been through a lot, a lot of tragedies, a lot of stuff we don't even understand. But when you walk in faith and you walk on the word of God, God can heal everything. And I don't look at my brother as being dead. He's just sleeping. So I want to say to my sister, Diane, to Jack and to Richard, thank you. Thank you for being there for my brother, for our brother. I wasn't there when he was sick, but we kept in contact before he got sick. And we always used to talk about um, we was going to go crabbing. And the only time he would call me is when Richard would make him mad. I said, what Richard did now? Oh, sure. He got me in here cleaning these old fish. I said, well, where he at? Where he always at? Gone somewhere, him and his son. I said, well, I'm going to call Richard and get on him by leaving. Oh, no, don't worry about it. I got it. It's, they clean now. But he loved, to, he loved to do things for his siblings. He showed a lot of love to them. You know, his favorite thing was with Richard was doing the fish and going hunting him and Paul. The favorite thing was Jackie was babysitting. Anything she needed done, he'd do it. Favorite thing with Diane was being there for her, cleaning up whatever was done. He did that. So he was a jack of all trades. So I say this today. This is just a celebration because my brother lived his funeral every day of his life. It was not perfect. But he lived his life. So I say to the head from the caboose, take your rest, and I'll see you in the morning. They're going to have a video presentation. Can you say amen? All of those remarks were enjoyed by all of us. Can you say amen? It puts a special touch on the insight of the life of Uncle Robert. Come on, say amen. God is good all the time, and all the time the Lord is good. After that, we'll have a selection, and then I'll say something from Jesus. Can you say amen?
Uncle Robert sound like a real fun guy. I didn't know him, but I know he's up in heaven having a good time right now. And just to the family, as you be each other's strength, and as you're there for each other, just remember that God is your ultimate strength. He's the one that will see you through. He said he would never leave you and never forsake you. And I believe him. And if you believe him on today, let that be comfort to your heart. This is a song I like to sing just to encourage you. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. Song just simply says this, Lord, you are my strength.
be your strength. Amen. He is my strength. Strength like no other. Can you say amen? And it certainly reaches to me. Amen. I have enjoyed these moments of worship and reflection about Uncle Robert. Can you say amen? Especially the comment about Jessica being Ali. That just tickled me on the inside. Come on, say amen. Now, amen, I'm here, amen, to do God's business. And I want to encourage you, amen, as I do the business of the Lord. Come on, say amen. 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 I, I, I wondered what to preach. And it was impressed upon my heart a, a particular message that I given sometime back, amen, amen, and hopefully it'll encourage you, amen, as even I reflected upon it, it has encouraged me, and let me say family, I love you, amen, I'm getting to know you, can you say amen, amen, mama's cooking is the best in the world, come on, say amen. Make me feel like the spirit that hit me when she says she cooking something. Lord knows I'm telling the truth. Come on, say amen. Amen, amen. Be encouraged, amen. God will see you through. He'll hold you in his righteous right hand. He knows how to encourage your heart. Can you say amen? I want to look at one of the oldest books in the Bible, the book of Job. Job chapter 19, some reflections of Job after his friends had been running their mouths for some time. Job had something to say to them about where he stood with the Lord. Because they felt like he, you know, had run amok with God. And Job says, I have not. And so I want to read these reflections to you, amen, and be encouraged that we really don't know where nobody stands with God. I wish I had a witness, but the book will be my witness. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. They themselves, amen, have to establish that. Come on, say amen. Amen. Uncle Robert has been in the company of the redeemed. Based on what you wrote about him. Can you say amen? amen? Hear the words of the Lord. Oh, that my words were written. This is Job inscribing his testimony. Just in case he passes away and no one can be a witness. Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. That they were engraved on a rock with an iron pen and lead forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives. And he shall stand at last on the earth. And after my skin is destroyed, this I know. That in my flesh, I shall see God. Whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. How my heart yearns within me. Can you say amen? You may be seated. Listen to Job talk to his friends. He really talking back to him. For I know that my Redeemer lives. And he shall stand at last on the earth. Can you say amen? amen. Let me just whisper a prayer for you. God, we thank you today that you are God all by yourself. We bless your name to know that there's no situation you can't redeem us from. 
There's no place that we are on planet earth that you can bring us out. No matter how broken, no matter how far we've fallen, no matter where we are, your hand is able to redeem us. Now thank you today that we understand that whenever we're in a situation, we've got a redeemer. Whenever we go through something, we've got someone who can bring us out. Now God bless this family with peace, with your grace, with your comfort that you provide in the name of Jesus, even in these moments. Let them know that everything is going to be all right because of you and all that you have done. It's going to be all right because you're able to make it all right. And we bless your name today. That's nothing too hard for you. We acknowledge that now in the name of Jesus. Now God, hold them, comfort them, keep them. Wipe the tears from their eyes. In Jesus' name, come on, say amen. 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 Job finally breaks his silence and gives his rebuttal to his friends who thought he was on the wrong side of God. Who thought that he did not have a relationship with God, an established relationship with God. And Job says, like my son was saying to someone who was trying to discipline him that was not his father, I got a father. And so Job says to his friends who did not know his relationship with God, I got a God. For I know that my redeemer lives. It would be it would be equivalent to what your uncle would say. I got a God. I I know that my Redeemer lives. It seems like yesterday or just yesterday, I picked up the phone and on the other end was a friend of mine who began to explain the predicament that he was in. It was difficult. Things seemed broken out of balance. And as he talked, I began to think it may be beyond repair. He went on and on and explained the many difficulties he was having and had been through and, and the weight he was under. By the time he was finished, I felt I was under the same weight, but he closed the conversation out of nowhere with a burst of confident faith. He said to me unequivocally, but I know God can bring me out. And how many of you know today, whatever you're in, God can bring you out? How many of you understand that whatever difficulty you face, God can make a way out of nowhere? I wish I had company right there. He said, God can bring me out. It's, it was almost as if he was saying, I know my Redeemer lives. Such was the case with Job, who sat in ashes and was being accused of wrong and sin. And after he acknowledged that his suffering was comfortless, he's told Job, you should repent and Job says he would plead with God over and over and repent if he could get an audience with God but God was silent at the time he is accused of folly and Job prays for relief after being accused of being wicked and, and God was punishing him his friend said after 10 times of being shamed and disgraced because of a mitigating pain and immense suffering, he looks his friends or accusers in the eye with pain and suffering in his eyes and says, I know my Redeemer lives. Don't know about you, but I, I know God is going to bring me out. I, I know about my relationship with God. There is something uniquely refreshing about trusting God in broken moments when life seems to be down when you seem to be going through a difficult moment in your life when you can't see your way that's something refreshing about trusting God in that moment have I got company here Job says as his rebuttal write it down and scribe it on a book and grave it on a rock let iron be my pen and, and let, let, let the lead spill as ink and let the rock be my tablet and let it stand forever here's how his certainty is in God his covenant relation holds him in the moment of his suffering. That's anything that can hold you now is your relationship with God, your confidence in God. Have I got somebody? He utters these words with great confidence. Job, hope is in the midst of despair, reaches its crescendo, it reaches its peak, it reaches its hike. He's got to talk about it now. They've been talking to him, but now he begins to talk back to his friends. Slandered by his friends with the death in 
amen, that Job looks at the future in which his Redeemer waits, and he says to his friends, you've been talking for a while. But I've got something to say now. I've got something to say. They say, Job, what do you want to say while sick and, and sickness has invaded your body and emaciated it? What do you want to say, Job, when you, your eyes seem to be sunken into your skull and the skin is barely cleaving to your bone? What do you want to say, Job? And, and you can hear the chill of death blow over your soul. First thing Job wants to tell him is what he knows. And sometimes, child of God, only thing you can hold on to when you're going through a difficult moment is what you know. Stick with the horse that brought you in. What you know. What, what you convicted about. What you're confident in. What you are sure of in dark moments in your life. You got to stick to what you know. And so Job begins to tell them what he knows about his predicament and what he knows about his relationship with God. What he understands God will do even in a broken moment. What you know, child of God, Job says, he speaks of the certainty about his Redeemer. He says, for I know. That's what you ought to breathe on for a minute now. For I know. Just what do you know, Job? Job says, there is one thing that I, I'm sure of because for I know can be translated as for me, I know. Don't know what you know, but I... That's some things that I know. Have I got a witness here? I don't know it just with my head. I know it with my heart. I don't know it just in good times. I know it also in bad times. I don't know it just when God is speaking to me, but I know it when God is silent. I don't just know it when my life is blessed and I'm living my best life. I know it when I'm broken. I don't, I don't just know it when you're talking about me. I know it when I'm talking to God. I wish I had company up in here. This is what I know. What Job was saying is that you can know your Redeemer lives when life is not as great, but you're in a grind. I mean, it seems to be grinding you down. You still can know that God is still good. You still can know that God will make a way. When, when, when life is not as wonderful and you're wounded, as the sister said, he can bind up the wounded heart. Have I got somebody? He says, for I know in the Hebrew, it's emphatic position of the pronoun I, which is in verse 25. Job says, Says he has a subtle conviction. Don't care how much storm is in his life, he's just going to believe in God. Don't care how much trouble comes his way, he's going to believe in God. Have I got somebody? Like his favorite scripture, he was going to believe in God. Believe also in God. Believe in me. I understand that God can work this thing out no matter what's going on in my life. I have a subtle conviction. I Yes, I know. I know that God is real. I know I have a covenant relationship with him. I know my Redeemer can bring me out. Do you know that when you're going through down moments? Do you know that when you're in trouble? Do you understand what God can do even now in the face of death? Are you with me up in here? You ought to know some things in this moment. You with me here? Job speaks of another thing that he knows. He says, he says, Job speaks of his covenant relationship with his Redeemer. For I know that my Redeemer. Have I got company here? You see, you got to know about that relationship, amen, that, that could not be broken no matter how broken life is at the moment. I know that my Redeemer lives. Have I got somebody? What Job is trying to explain and what I'm trying to tell you is that God is a consummate Redeemer. I mean, what do you mean, Pastor, that he's a perfect Redeemer? Although, amen, I don't always act perfect at times. God is a perfect Redeemer. If he ever lays his hands on me, you cannot take me out of his hand. Like, God is a complete Redeemer. He redeems me completely. Have I got somebody? That means that when God says, I'm his child, I'm his child. Death cannot separate me from the love of God. I wish I had company up in here. That God will finish the work he started in me and you. And sometimes it doesn't look like a finished work. But when I get to heaven, I'm going to look just like him. Have I got company here? There is no situation he cannot redeem me from. You ought to shout right there. Because you may be in some trouble you got yourself in. But God can still get you out. There is no person that he cannot redeem. Don't care how low down you are. Don't care broken y'all. Don't care how long you've been out to church, God can still redeem your soul. Have I got company up in here, up in here. No circumstance that God cannot redeem me from. How does he see his redeemer? 
First of all, Job says, listen, he's, he is my redeemer because he has particular insight to my situation. Really what he says, only God knows what I'm going through. God knows my heart. God knows where I am. Have I got company up in here? And he can defend me in the courtrooms of this world. The charges that you will bring against me, civil or criminal, he can defend me. God will defend me in the courtrooms of glory. I wish I had company up in here because Jesus will get the charges dropped for all of us who trust in him. Help me somebody. He is the redeemer and he redeems me from everything. Every accusation. Have I got company here that's been published or submitted in trial? The devil is always trying to accuse me of something, but God says he can redeem me. He is a living and powerful redeemer who will plead my cause. I wish I had somebody. Yes, I'm guilty, but he still can redeem me. Yes, I did it, but he still can redeem me. Nobody knows why the Lord allows certain things in our lives to happen, but God knows. God knows what's going on in your life have I got somebody here listen at best Joe's friends were doing guesswork about his situation but God has a particular insight of what's going on in all of our lives he knows our brokenness he understands our tears he knows what we are in life have I got company up in here my redeemer does live in in this word insight it means that God sees he knows his friends were accusing him, but Job had not done anything wrong. He had a right relationship with God. Job says, you see me suffering and right away you think I've done something wrong. You have been accusing me or you assume the worst. If I'm suffering, I must be suffering because I'm sinning. And if I'm sinning, it's the reason why I'm suffering. Then explain why does God give Jonah a shade tree in his disobedience but allows the devil to cause suffering in Job's life and he is a righteous man and allows skin to fall from his bones. Have I got company up in here? If I lose my home, I must be doing something wrong. If I lose my car, surely something is wrong. If I lose my job, God must be out to get me. You know, these kind of false conceptions about God and what we go through in the world. Have I got somebody? Job is a classic case. Just because you are suffering doesn't mean you are sinning. I wish I had a shout right there. He's a classic case, amen. Just because you got difficult moments in your life doesn't mean God ain't on your side. That's why he says, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I feel like God is moving in this moment some kind of way. You can suffer, listen, with the Savior who may not save you out of every difficult situation that you go through. And that's why the Bible says, though, yea, do I walk. Because God doesn't have to let me walk. But yea, though I walk through the valley and shadow of death, I will feel no evil for you are with me God is with me when things look difficult in my life God is with me when I'm broken heart God is with me when I got tears in my eyes are you with me up in here that's the kind of God we serve he can hold us in the midnight hour does anybody know something about that that God can hold you when you can't hold yourself but only, but only, but only he has a particular insight to what we're going through and the things that we have been dealing with. He knows what's going on in our life. And sometimes he allows some things to happen in our life. But you've got to trust God to know that he's right there. He understands. Nobody can criticize you. Nobody knows your heart. But God knows your heart. If you let him do it, amen, he can change the heart that folk are criticizing. He knows it better than anyone else. But this redeemer has a particular interest in, in Job. He had a particular interest in the word, the Hebrew word translated redeem in verse 25, refers to a kinsman redeemer, a relative who would reclaim or restore the family property by paying the debt. They was losing something because a debt needed to pay, be paid. Someone, amen, was willing to pay the price for your debt and mine. A debt needed to be paid to God because we were on the wrong side of God. Have I got somebody? You need to pay that debt. We were in a broken relationship with God. And Jesus is our redeemer who paid the price for you and me. He brought us back because Adam lost us because of his sin. But he brings us new life like Boaz brought to you, to Ruth rather, because God is able to redeem us. Are you with me up in here? Although God allowed it, amen, there is nothing that Satan, amen, 
man, sin or suffering and death can't take away from us that God cannot restore. Are you with me up in here? Jesus has restored it all. Amen. Jesus is the one that will bring us back to where we ought to be. God has a particular interest in you and me. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, amen, will, amen, can have eternal life. If you believe, you can have it. If you believe, you can have it. If you believe, you can have it. God wants to redeem us back to the relationship he once had with you and I. He is a redeemer who has a particular inspiration. Child of God, there's something about knowing, amen, that your redeemer lives. This word carries the idea that God can deliver us even from death. He could deliver us even from corruption. He could deliver us from any pit we find our life in. That's something to shout about there. Because you and I, like me, have found ourselves in situations we felt like we couldn't get out. But we serve a God that can get us out. We run in the doors we couldn't open. We serve a God who can open those doors. We run into places we felt like we couldn't find our way. But God knows the way. Have I got somebody? You're never too confused for God to bring you out. And you've got to understand that in your life. He's a God that can do anything but fail. Aren't you glad about it? He utters a particular inspiration. In the grip of death, when it appears that everything was gone, while Job was writing his last will and testament, he utters this, I know my Redeemer lives. When his body had been entombed and his flesh was being destroyed, he understood that God can bring me out. Can you have that hope when your life is on a cane? Can you have that hope when things are broken in your life? God will bring me out. He's a God that will bring us out. Have I got somebody? Finally, here's what he, he knew about his Redeemer. Job speaks of his confidence in his redeemer. Yes, sir. For I know that my redeemer lives. Don't know about yours, but that's still a possibility for me. Don't know about your situation, but I got somebody that can get me a comeback from where I am right now. Are you with me here? I'm dying, but my Redeemer lives. He, he acts on a behalf to correct all that has been said and done about me. When I'm gone, my Redeemer still lives. In other words, Job says, he doesn't have to redeem me now. He can redeem me after death. He can redeem me, amen, after death has claimed my body. God can still redeem me. Does anyone believe that? This word means he relives. It means he's alive, that he is strong. He has life. Have I got somebody? Is Job, is Job, 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 is Job saying my redeemer will vindicate me? Of course he is. The word my indicates a personal relationship that he had with his redeemer. He has a personal relationship that is a kinsman redeemer. All of us, if we want God to get us up, we've got to have a personal relationship with him. You can't be stretched out here and want him to get you up if you don't have a personal relationship with the God you serve. Are you with me up in here? He had a personal relationship with the redeemer on his deathbed. He says his redeemer is alive. His Redeemer is active. Doesn't matter what's happening to me. I don't, I, don't, I don't want you to be fooled by what I'm going through. I, it looks broken. It looks bad. But God can work this thing out. You ought to be in a position and you say to some folk who think, hey man, you're out of the game. If you won't get back in the game. It looks broken. It looks bad. But God will get me out. Have I got somebody? The God can handle anything that I run up against. He's powerful. He is my Redeemer. It means His Redeemer is strong and powerful. And His Redeemer is alive. Job gives us the inspiration that He knows His Redeemer lives in spite of the several trials of His life. But you can say like Job while picking those scaly flesh of blood and pulse from your body. While his breath was repulsive to everybody that was around him, I know my Redeemer lives. When everything is broken in your life, you ought to be able to say, I know my Redeemer lives. Have I got company here? When life strips you of your health and it will sometime, you ought to be able to say, I know my Redeemer lives. 
when good things and good days no longer find you and meet you, you ought to be able to say, I know my Redeemer lives. When my family removes the pillow of support from my weary head, I ought to be able to say, I know my Redeemer lives. When my close friends forget about me and sometimes they will, you ought to be able to say, I know my Redeemer lives. When my flesh clings to my bone and my body is emaciated, I ought to be able to say, I know my Redeemer lives. With my tattered flesh and wasted body, I ought to be able to say, I know my Redeemer lives. When life frowns at me and death smiles at me and the chilly winds of death blow into my room and go across my soul, I say, I know my Redeemer lives. Death cannot hide me where God cannot reach me. I know my Redeemer lives. God can handle anything in my life, so I'll shout today and say, I know my Redeemer lives. When I close my eyes and my ears are hushed to this world and I'm carried to an undiscovered country, I'll say, I know my Redeemer lives. I'm going where the wicked shall cease from troubling and the weary shall be at rest. I'll out today. I know my Redeemer lives. If there anybody in this house can shout right now in a broken place, I know my Redeemer lives. Life may be difficult and life may be hard, but I shout, I know my Redeemer lives. What am I trying to say to you, God? People, I'm trying to say it's going to get better after a while and by and by. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Why? Because I know my Redeemer lives. I stopped by to tell you, do you know your Redeemer lives? Do you know God can work it out in your life? You ain't got to drop your head. You ain't got to throw in a towel. You need to shout back at your problem. I know my Redeemer lives. Say yes. Oh, yes. Child of God. I don't care how difficult it is. You ought to be able to say to your friends, your accusers, and folk who think it's over in your life. I don't know what you're talking about. I know. You got to know it for yourself. My Redeemer lives. Bless his name today. Bless his name today. It's about eyes to close. The script is not over. Don't close the door on me. Don't write me off. You may not think I'm going to make a comeback, but I got a God that can bring me back. He's alive. Not only is he alive, he's strong and powerful. And he don't have to redeem me when you think he ought to redeem me. But even if I die, in death, he can redeem me. And Job says, with my own eyes, I will see God. Because he can redeem me. If you don't have a relationship with the redeemer, he can't redeem you. You got to have a relationship. I'm not talking about your name on the church roll. I'm not talking about you being baptized. I'm talking about you having a relationship, an intimate relationship with him, a personal relationship with him that comes through faith, not feelings. That comes, amen, by trusting him, not the golden rules, not the Ten Commandments. You never trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You died today. You don't know where you're going. You really don't know your Redeemer lives. But today you say, Pastor, amen. I want to know him who can redeem me from any situation. I want to know him who can redeem me no matter what I'm going through. I want to have that hope of glory in my heart no matter how dark it gets in my life. No matter how rough the road gets. I have a redeemer. I got a lawyer. I got an advocate. I got a savior. I have hope. Heads bowed, eyes closed. You never trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I mean, really trust him. Say, Lord, I want my life to change. I want to go in a new direction. 
Because redemption does mean change. Say, Pastor, it's me. So give people that private moment. Heads bowed, eyes closed. You can't bow your head, just close your eyes. Give them that moment. It's personal. Will you pray for me that I'll enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ and accept him as my redeemer, the forgiver of all my sins, to bring peace in my heart and secure my soul for all of eternity. That's you right where you are. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Pastor, pray with me. Just lift your hand. Just lift your hand. Pastor, pray with me. I see a hand. Come on. I see another hand. I see another hand. Come on, pray with me. There's nothing to be ashamed of because I pray this prayer. I'm a sinner saved by grace. Same man, same swag, but sinner saved by grace. Listen, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray a prayer. You can pray it silently. You can pray it, amen, audibly. But you have to trust God in this moment to receive your soul, amen, and forgive you of your sins. And accept the gospel message of Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for your sin. He got up the third day. Amen. Your Redeemer lives. You pray this prayer in faith. This moment God will save you. The next moment you need direction. Get connected to a church that will help you understand the faith that you hold so dear. Because so many of us don't understand it. We're, we're destroyed by ignorance. The lack of knowledge does that. Pray this with me. If you want to accept God this moment, let's pray. Heavenly Father, today I open my heart to you. I understand that everyone needs a Redeemer. We get in places, situations that we can't get ourselves out of. But God, today I give my heart to you I accept your son Jesus Christ as my redeemer I believe the gospel message he died for my sins and today I believe he rose on the third day forgive me God I made mistakes, done terrible things, things I'm not proud of, but I understand I have a great Redeemer. Today, I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, and I believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead and based on your most holy word Romans chapter 10 verse 9 I am saved come on put your hands together what a great day amen Uncle Robert got us together amen and now we all got a new name have I got somebody not only will you have a new name you'll have a new robe that name will be written across your forehead and Jesus will give it to him to you himself can you say amen, director, will you come? Now let me say amen. Amen. We're going to make our way down here to deposit the remains. The absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. For me to live is Christ. Me to die is gain. Not goodbye. As I'll see you later. Been in the company of the redeemed. You wrote it yourself. You begin the relationship with God early in his life. We dedicated his life. Amen. To the King of Kings. I leave you with his faith, he'll hold me in his righteous right hand. It's a God that will hold you in his hand. Let's stand together.
this moment due to the inclementable weather. I want to do the committal. Come a little closer, gather around, space yourself so you can hear me where you are. Can you say amen? The director will have a few words after my committal. Can you say amen? I heard the voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labor, and their works do follow them. Shall we pray? God in heaven today, we thank you for these moments of reflection how our souls have been refreshed, how we've underscored and remembered, chuckled in our heart about moments and times we spent with Uncle Robert. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for bringing this family together even in this difficult season of pandemic. But Lord, we know that your peace can abide. And so I pray for the peace that surpasses all human understanding that will keep their hearts and minds in the name of Jesus. I pray for his brothers and sisters. God, you know what's upon their heart. Ask that you relieve it in the name of Jesus. Help them to understand that weeping may endure for a night, but the morning is coming. Thank you for the morning. Thank you for a brand new day. New mercies we experience every day. Bless them now. Keep them strong and ever in your care. In Jesus' name. Come on, say amen. Amen. For as much as it pleased the Almighty God and His wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our brother, Robert Lee. We commit, therefore, his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the resurrection of the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose coming to judge the world, the earth, and the sea shall give up their dead. The bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made like its glorious body according to that by power by which he's able to subdue all things unto himself. Director. Praise the Mitchell will deposit the body. Let's give the benediction. God of peace and God of glory, bless this family with the peace that you can provide. Give them the comfort and 
understanding, oh God, that you are their redeemer. Bless them to know, amen, that everything is going to be all right. Keep them ever in your care. It's my prayer. In Jesus' name, let everyone say amen. amen. Be careful going to your cars. It's raining heavy. That's the only reason we did not go down to the gravesite.